morning. Let's come together in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we prepare to celebrate Eucharist today, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to God our Father. Lord, have mercy. You have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd who leads us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. The Mass is offered today for Polly Porter. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleadings of your people and bestow your peace on our time. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. When David and Saul approached on David's return after slaying the Philistine, women came out from each of the cities of Israel to meet King Saul, singing and dancing with tambourines, joyful songs, and sistrums. The women played and sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry and resentful of this song, for he thought they gave David ten thousands, but only thousands to me. All that rem remains for him is the kingship. And from that day on, Saul was jealous of David. Saul discussed his intention of killing David with his son Jonathan, and with all his servants. But Saul's son Jonathan, who was very fond of David, told him, My father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard tomorrow morning. Get out of sight and remain in hiding. I, however, will go out and stand beside my father in the countryside where you are and will speak to him about you. If I learn anything, I will let you know. Jonathan then spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, Let not your majesty sin against his servant David. For he has committed no offense against you, but he has helped you very much by his deeds. When he took his life in his hands and slew the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for Israel through him, you are glad to see it. Why then should you become guilty of shedding innocent blood by killing David without cause? Saul heeded Jonathan's plea and swore, As the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. So Jonathan summoned David and repeated the whole conversation to him. Jonathan then brought David before Saul 
And David served him as he did before. The word of the Lord. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for men trample upon me. All the day they press their attack against me. My adversaries trample upon me all the day. Yes, many fight against me. My wanderings you have counted. My tears are stored in your flask. And are they not recorded in your book? Then do my enemies turn back when I call upon you? Now I know that God is with me. In God whose promise I glory, in God I trust without fear. What can flesh do against me? I am bound, O oh God, by vows to you. Your thank offerings I will fulfill, for you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. In God I trust, I shall not be. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus withdrew toward the sea with his disciples. A large number of people followed from Galilee and from Judea. Hearing what he was doing, a large number of people came to him also from Jerusalem, from Eduim, and from beyond the Jordan, and from the neighborhood of Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd so that they would not crush him. He had cured many, and as a result, those who had diseases were pressing upon him to touch him. And whenever unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. He warned them sternly not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Quite a contrast between uh, Jesus and his humility, not wanting anyone to know, probably in many ways because of uh, he didn't want people to, uh, to, to make him a king, to make him a military leader. They thought at the time that's what the Messiah would be. He... Uh, keeps its secret, the messianic secret that is all through Mark's gospel. But it's, it's interesting, that's certainly not the way of, of Saul in the first reading. Saul is, is, is jealous and, and, and angry because David is becoming much, much more popular than him. David, uh, uh, one who has slayed Goliath, and, and, and they're praising David as as being so much greater than Saul, and he becomes angry and resentful and wants to kill him. There's a lot there, I think, for us to think about. I, I, first, it calls us to humility, to have confidence in God above all things and not ourselves. Saul gets in trouble when he becomes too full of himself. And actually, what we should imitate is David's trust in God. David, who the psalm he beautifully says, trust in God. We have nothing to fear. But I think it's also that, that dangerous thing about comparing ourselves with others. We're all important and loved by God. We've all given our own gifts and talents, and we all have a place in this world and in this church. Let's ask God for that ability to be secure. Saul's problem is insecure. And how often does that get us in trouble, you know, with others and, and so many arguments, so many wars because we don't feel secure. Let's, uh, let's ask God to help us in the words of that psalm. Be secure in his love. Be secure of our own gifts and talents and who we are in our relationship with God. In God I trust. 
خوشم آتی Let's stand to pray. Coming into God's presence with joyful confidence, we bring these prayers. For those who care for others, especially those struggling with addictions, may they be supported with the Spirit's gifts of fortitude and love, we pray to the Lord. For those who seek renewal and change, may they be open to following Christ, we pray to the Lord. For women and children who are victims of trafficking, may they be freed from their captors and led to health and safety, we pray to the Lord. For families whose children are in danger, that civil authorities work to break down systems of evil and injustice, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering, may their experience of Christ in the sacraments open them to God's mercy and grace, we pray to the Lord. Pause now for all of our own special prayers and intentions and for the many needs of our faith community. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, have mercy on us who are sinners. Grant that we, in having mercy on others, may learn to love your mercy more. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. It is through your goodness that we've received the bread. We offer you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. It is through your goodness that we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It has become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly it is right and just our duty, our salvation at all times to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trusting in God's love, we can now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Say the word in my soul.
We've come to know and believe in the love that God has for us. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace.